Okay, starting today, we're looking over listed data. That's what I call it. Um, I don't know what the technical mathematical term is, but listed data is by test scores. So what we'll do is we'll start with an example because I have found that the best way to show this is with an example. I forgot this is the only system that I have to actually hit calibrate, sorry. So let's take some numbers and I'll start with about the lowest number you can start with and that's 5 n is equal to 5 and we'll take a sample of this class and find out what the average age in this classroom is of course it's going to be very high confidence in what was we go diagonally across the room here oh, 17. 17. And here. Yeah. Miss Carroy, you don't look 28. You don't take that to your daddy. And you. 21. And you. 19. And you. Okay, okay. well, y'all didn't help matters much. Okay, there's five numbers. All right. First of all, N is odd. Let's write that down. The n is odd. That's going to affect the median. If the n is odd, it's easy to get the median. If the n is even, you have to take the two middle numbers and average them together. Write that down. We'll go over it again. Don't worry. Second of all, you put them in order. That's going to be pretty simple. 17, 19, 19, 21, and 28. Okay? So once you put them in order, just throw these away. So, mean. Mean for a listed set of data is a summation of n or summation of x over n. So in this case, 17 plus 19. Now, people don't reach for the calculator whenever you got to add. You got three 20s right here. What's 3 times 20? 60. 60. Then you got a 30 right here. And then you subtract in your head whatever, you, whatever you're missing from 20 and 30. Please don't use a calculator to add five numbers. <sighs> All right. 20, 20, 20. This 20 goes right here. So there's two 20s right there. There's a 20 right there. That's 60, 59 right in our head. 30, 30 plus 60 is 90. Minus 2 is what? 78, right? Or 88, whatever. 88 and 87. I got 87. That's those numbers right here, right? Okay. 87 plus 17 is going to be what? 104? Somebody add them up and see what you get. Use your calculator since it's the all-knowing. Throw it around on your finger like a basketball while you're at it. Add them up. 104, what did we say? I don't believe it. It's a mirror. You can make change with cash rate. 104 over what? 5. Now, 5 will go into 10 people two times. And 5 will not go into 4, so that's 0. And then 5 will go into 40 how many times? And there is your mean. <clears throat> now, what, what, what's next in the list of things that we need to find for a list of data? Median. When you hear the word median, what do you think about? Middle of the road. Middle. Okay? Median. Nobody thinks median. Oh, well, that's the middle of the house. Nobody thinks that. When you hear median, you think about the middle of the road. 
that thing, that big concrete thing that sometimes you go over when you don't want to go right or left, go over it. That's a median. It's in the middle of the road. With odd, when n is odd, you get the middle. Alright? When n is even, we're going to do 6 in a minute. We're going to do the same thing with 6. Except you take the middle two numbers and you add them together. In this case, the median is what? 19. Look at these two numbers. 20 or 21 and 19. The data is pretty tight. Okay? Not tight as you want it, but it's tight. Why is it tight? Because these two numbers are what? Close together. If the mean is 20.8 and the median come out to be 15, then you're talking about something different. Or vice versa. It depends on it depends on your it depends on your data. You just you just comes with with experience doing problems. Proportion. Uh, what comes next? Mode. Just remember, MO, MO, <coughs> mode is what? The most. Which one shows up the most? 19. Now, when N is odd, these two are calculated or observed? Observed. Remember that. When n is odd, those two numbers are observed. You do not calculate. So even if you're dumb as a post, you should be able to get those two on some questions. Okay? Even if you say you can't do math, you should be able to get at least those two. Mean, median, mode, range. That's your highest minus your what? So 28 minus 17. Come on, y'all can do it. So your range is 11. Your highest minus your lowest. Mid-range. Mid-range is very important. Because mid-range in... 3.3 or 3.4, whatever the last section is, which we're getting close to. So, what does that mean? Test coming up. Oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. I think he's going to come out tomorrow. What's the test? What's the test? What's the test? You missed the test yesterday. Highest plus lowest divided by what? So, that's going to be 28 plus 17, which is what? 45? Somebody check it. 45 divided by 2 is what? 22.5 mid-range median mean this right here is 23 it tells me that there's something out of whack a little bit not much so mean median mode range mid-range and then you have your variance and your standard deviation, which we're going to go over on another screen. I'm going to pull up spreadsheet. You do all this over and do it in an organized fashion because there's no way I could do it and write like this and get it all on one board. Okay? What's the A? Where? No, that's two. Oh, that's two. Man, I can't write. Can't that again. That's why I do things on the on spreadsheet. Alright, so everybody good so far? And like I say, most of you don't have a problem with this. So let's take that data and go over to the handy dandy spreadsheet. So y'all can all fuss about it.
17, 19, 19, 21, and 28. And that's X. And I like Ariel. I told y'all that last time. Twelve and three. Alright, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put mean, median, mode, range, mid range. and standard deviation up uh, variance just because you might go into some class one day that wants the variance you need to know the difference between the two and the standard deviation so there's our numbers and we'll start off with the mean first of all I'm gonna go in is equal to and I'm gonna put five right here because that'll help me out with calculating First thing I got to do is add all these up, right? So we hit our summation bar, key, whatever, button. And there's that. And then we go over here and it says equals this number divided by my division button, button, that number. And there's my mean. No. Usually, when you hit equals, it automatically says, okay, what you want me to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And you just got to pick the cells. Median. Median is observed, so it's going to be equal to this guy right here. Now, I'm going to highlight that yellow. And there's a difference between yellow and yellow. That's yellow. And we'll color that one yellow. Since it's observed, I've highlighted. And the mode is these two, and I will do that and that, and meaning that it, that's observed also. Range is equal to the highest minus what? Lowest. And you don't put a division symbol in there on top of it. Kind of messes up the uh, order of operations with the computer. Mid range is equal to parentheses. Why am I adding parentheses? Because it's got a numerator and a denominator. And despite what some of y'all think, that name y'all's calculators, um, your calculator cannot discern the order of operations as well as you can. Divided by two. There. Okay, now the variance and standard deviation. Well, that one you need to do by hand. Now, in order to do the, the uh, variance and standard deviation, you have to know the formula. And I'll write the formula up on the board. formula for the variance and standard deviation was the same formula, except one has the square root. The variance is equal to x minus x bar, the summation of x minus x bar, quantity squared over n minus 1. And then the standard deviation is equal to the square root of what? The variance. Which is that. So that being here. So as I told you with the frequency distribution, whenever you're confused, go back to the what? Back to the formula. Alright, what do we have to do to get the variance? We have to subtract what from x? What is x bar? <coughs> x bar is mean. So we have to subtract 
the mean from each one of these. So that's going to be called x minus x bar column. So go ahead and make your column in your notes x minus x bar. x minus x bar <coughs> equals 17 minus no, that's equals minus 20.8 now for those of you that are learning how to do Excel or know how to do Excel notice I didn't say those that don't know how to do it those that don't know how to do it can use it to do it by hand I'm not telling you you have to use Excel <sighs> hit F4. What does that do? It locks that number right here. See, it changed it to a different kind of it locks it. Excel, if you copy down, it will grab the next number and the next number over here and subtract it. And it'll take the this number and subtract this number and this number and subtract this number. So when you copy down, if you hit F4, what will it subtract each time? 20.8. If you don't lock it, it's going to subtract 20.8 on the first one. It's going to subtract 19 on this one. It's going to subtract 19 on this one. It's going to subtract 11 from this one and 22.5 from this one and so on. So you have to lock it and that's what I did. I hit F4, box 4, F4 and hit enter. and copy down. And there's your numbers. Now what if I did not hit F4? Well let me show you what would happen. If you didn't hit F4 it would give you the first number correct. Go ahead and write those 1.8, 1.8, .2 and 7.2 down because those are correct. But if you don't hit F4 those are the numbers you're going to get. Why? Well, what's 17 minus 20.8? Negative 3.8. What's 19 minus 19? What's 19 minus 19? What's 21 minus 11? And what's 28 minus 22.5? You see why you have to lock it? So make sure you lock it. So what you do is you just hit F4 whenever you type in the 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 sale with 20.8, hit F4, and it locks it. And then you can copy it down and get the correct numbers. Now, what do you do after? So let's take a red marker or a green marker, meaning we've done it. And what, oops, I don't know why I even tried that. I can't write with this mouse. Okay, we just did. X minus X bar. Now what do we need to do? We need to square each one of them, correct? So your next column would be X minus X bar what? Squared. Or totally screw up. There we go. Parentheses X minus X bar close parentheses quantity squared. So that means we're going to take this guy and what are we going to do? Square it and copy down. Check your numbers. Okay. And now, let's take a blue marker. We just squared it. So what's left? Huh? Add them all up. Right here. Add them all up. So we're going to take this guy right here and hit the summation button. And I'm going to highlight this purple. 
Well, I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. I'm going to highlight it. Purple. No. That's... No. Let's get a... That's good. There you go. And we'll put circles around it and make it big, bold, and move everything out of the way. That's bold. All right. That number is our what? Starts with an N. <coughs> numerator. Okay. That is our numerator. Once you add that up, got your numerator. So right over here I'm going to put variance is equal to and then I'm going to put in the top equals this number. Okay, go back to the formula and we'll I'll just circle it in red. We got to get this part right here. And that says what? N minus 1. Now a lot of you are probably saying, you know, why is he doing this? Why is he doing it? that? That formula is real simple. I'm telling you, there are people that have never seen standard deviation done by hand before. They've just been ramrodded into doing it in their calculator and they have no earthly idea how to actually find the standard deviation. So don't feel pregnant. It happens to a lot of people. So equals N, which is up here, minus what? One. And there's your two numbers. equals 72 divided by what? Four. There's our variance. And what do we do to get our standard deviation? Take the square root or raise it to the what? 0.5 power or one half power. So equals this guy raised to the 0.5 power. And there's your standard deviation. And of course, once you have the, st the mean and the standard deviation, what can you do? Oh. Draw your what? Draw your curve. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do every time. So that way when you get to chapter 6, you won't have the deer in the headlights look. Okay, I'll just erase this. Point 0.5. That's point 0.5 is the square root. Alright, so we'll move down here. And equals the mean. And then what are we going to do to the right? I'm asking y'all, that's not rhetorical. Add. Add the what? Standard deviation. And add standard deviation. Is our data tight? Well, you're talking about 4 versus 19 and 20. So is it tight? It's pretty tight. Now, if this was a mean of 20 and you had a standard deviation of 11, then your data is not tight. Or a standard deviation of 15 or a standard deviation of 9, then you're talking about sloppy data. Or your, your, your numbers are all over the place. Subtract.
Now, we've just figured out that anybody that's over 29 years old is unusual. Anybody that's under 12 years old is unusual. But that's only based on how many? Five people. And that's how you find your mean and your standard deviation. Yes, you can find it on your calculator in half the time. But what are you finding? Remember, y'all didn't even know what the average was. Y'all could not tell me what the definition of the average was. It's the, it's the mean. Yeah, but it's not what the definition is. Remember I showed you, the definition of the average is the number that represents no what? Variance. And none of you can tell me that. Oh, I could. Shut up. You didn't say nothing. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach you the mechanics behind it. I'm not trying to teach you theory. I'm not trying to teach you stuff that you'll never use. I'm just trying to teach you the mechanics behind the calculator because I know what's happened to a lot of you. Some teachers have taken the calculator and bashed you over the head with it and you had to use it or you couldn't pass the class. Some of you, that might have happened. Some of you, it may not have. But the whole point is, I meet a lot of you. I see a lot of you, especially in Walmart or Target or Best Buy. I'll give you six cents and watch your head explode. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we're going to take this same data and we're going to add one more number to it. And then we're going to add, eventually, I'm going to do the whole class. We're not going to do... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 30. We're not going to do that. I'm going to do 6, 7, and 8, and then we're going to move on to like 30 and let you see the numbers, how, how different it is. So we're going to take these numbers, and I'm just going to copy all of this. So I'm going to copy all of this. Control C. And am I trying to teach y'all something here? Yeah. Control C. I move down. Give yourself plenty of space. Don't put it right on top of each other. Put it right here, control V. Oops. Finger slip. Oops. Control V. Hold on a minute. Control C. Control V. We're gonna change this to six. Okay? And we're gonna add. I don't know, I'm just gonna pick somebody. Let's see we Ended with you, so I'm going to jump over to Carolina sweatshirt, back row, 18. And we're going to add, we're going to insert a row right here. Dang old insert. Dang old, well, no, we're not going to insert. Let me insert back here. 18 is going to go right here. Insert. 18 goes right there. Okay, now we got to fill in all those spots that we haven't filled in so I'm just going to copy this down there and we got to check everything because now the mean is going to be the average of those two numbers because n is what? 6. It's, a, it's an even number so let's just start from the beginning so I'm going to hit this guy equals the summation which is this we got to check that hit summation right here and let's check make sure it should automatically do it it did and divide by let's check equals this divided by that and that's correct and then let's go over here and check equals this number I don't know why it's doing that equals what is that c27 c27 minus this guy the f4 and enter and y'all check my math make sure that's correct and there's your numbers there and of course that three three squared is nine so that's about right 2 squared is 4, so that's about right. 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. 
0.66, that's 0 0.7, so that'd be 0 0.49, so that's about right. And that's close to 8, that'd be around a little, little less than 64, so that's about right. And you add all those up, and that's that. Let's check our median. That's these two numbers, so that's going to be, let me highlight these two numbers, yellow. And then equals parentheses, add the two numbers up, and divide by what? Now people are all, they always going to be the same? No. And yes, I know the average of 19 plus 19 is 19. I know that. Okay? I got a degree in everything. I know somebody was out there. I can't believe he's adding those two up. I did it because you need to see how to find that mean when the two numbers are different. All right? Oh. Okay, let me move this up. Control X, Control V. All right, mode. Mode again is 19. It's observed, so it's not a big deal. Range. Let's see if the range changed. This guy minus didn't because the the minimum and the maximum do not change. If the min and max don't change, then the range and the mid-range don't change. All right, variance, we checked all that. So, and there, you should have, somebody checked these numbers right here, make sure, I think that's standard deviation change to what? 4.0, pretty much. So what did the standard deviation do? Why? We added another number. Why? Tell me why. Tell me why. That's not what I'm looking for, but you're on the right track. Look at the numbers. Why Why did adding Mr. Carolina back there, why did that make the numbers tighter? It's adding another number. It's giving me more information, yes, but that's not what I'm looking for. Look at the numbers. They're closer to Mr. Carolina. What's your last name? I'm sorry. Huh? Freeman. Mr. Freeman's number added another number that was closer in respect to what? The other numbers that we had. What if Mr. Freeman was 23? What would that have done to the standard deviation? Made it bigger. Standard deviation is a measure of the V word. What? Variance. You're getting it? Calculator won't show you that. Just want to tell you. All right, so let's add a nerd. What do you mean add a nerd? Another one, depending on where you're from. Another one. So we're going to control C. Oops, sorry. Didn't copy enough. I got my got my distribution down here. Control C. Control V. And we're gonna make this seven. Oops, not T. I suck at type. Alright, so now we left Mr. Freeman and the Gator fan. Oh. Twenty. Uh-oh, she's going to mess us up. No, she's not going to mess us up too bad. Because she's right in here. So we're going to insert. And we're going to put 20 right here. And we got to check everything. What happens to our uh, median? What happens to it? Does it change? Yep, it changes. So we got to figure all that out. So let's just take all this off. And let's just go back to the beginning. Now, a lot of you think, and this is a lot of work, you've you got to do this for every second. No. When we do another homework problem in a minute, and I've got five, six, or seven values, what do I need to pull up? My Excel spreadsheet that I saved. And all i got to do is type in the what? Numbers, and it gives me everything, except for the mean or the... 
mode, I meant median or the mode, depending on if it's observed or calculated. So you do what you want. All right, so let's just go ahead and do this. So we got we changed that to seven, and let's do the summation here, which it probably already did it since I inserted it, but I want to check it just to make sure. And that number is equal to this number divided by this number. Median, n is equal to 7, so we just picked the what? The middle number. So it's equal to 19 again. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of 19. And the mode is going to be equal to the one that shows up the most, so it's still 19. I'm not going to worry about that. Range. Does the range change? No. Does the mid-range change? No. Those two doesn't change because these two didn't change. But look what it did to our standard deviation. It still went down. Why? Because she is included. See these right here? These are inclusive. These, those are inclusive. Now if you throw my age in there, oh my God! It's going to go crazy. Why? The standard deviation is going to go crazy because I'm old as dirt. Alright? So, if I throw my age in there, it's going to really mess up. Because I just threw in more what? Variance. Alright, let's do one more. Let's do eight. Thank you. Trying to find somebody that's not 18. I'm trying to look. How old? Are I? Mr. Let me get. Let me get you, Mr. Murray. What? How much is? How, much, how old are you? 21. 21. So we'll throw him. Well, that ain't gonna help me. We'll just throw Hubie in here. Dang old. I gotta remember. Dang old. 47 or 48. One of the two. I I'm born in December, so I have to think. Dang old 66. What's this year? Yeah. 48. Yeah, 48. So, dang old 48 right here. 48. And it didn't... Now, it did not... It did not include, because since I didn't insert it, it didn't include it. So, we're going to have to do everything different. So, let's just go ahead and do that. So, summation. Dang old. Throw it in there. And then, dang old, take this. This moves up to A. And then equals this guy divided by this guy. And there's that. And then we're going to subtract equals this guy. What is that? B, C, 83. C, 83 minus... This guy, F4, and then equals all of them. And check, let's see, 7, that'd be right. 6, that'd be right. So those look right. Oops, I don't have this one. Door. There we go. And check this, summation, is all of these. That really going to throw everything off. There we go. And what happened to my standard deviation? Went up to 10. I told you I'd throw a monkey wrench in it. I did, didn't I? Dang old started off with dang old 3 and 4 and dang old went 10. Now, look. What does that 10 also do as far as your data? It says that it's what? Sloppy. I put the sloppy in there. Because I put the variance in there, because now you got a gap right here of 20 years. Dang old 20 year gap. I don't care about that. Y'all figure that out. Dang old. If y'all can't figure the range and mid range out, I'll figure it out for you. Dang it. 
48 minus, I'm just kidding. Make sure I get it right. There it is, 31, and then mid-range is going to be equal to parentheses, this guy plus this guy divided by 2. There you go. How about that? Is that good? Divided by 1. I suck. Divide by two. There you go. Now, that's nice and dandy. But yet now I just showed you how to screw up your data. Now, what do you do to make it tighter? Well, you include everybody. So, the best way to do this is start from the beginning. So, I'm going to go down here and dang old add another sheet. And we're just going to go down the list. And let's see if y'all can do this without screwing up, all right? And we'll start over here. We're going to go this way, and then we're going to go this way, and we're going to go this way. Now, do I need to point? I hope I don't have to point it out to you, okay? We're going like this, all right? So, we'll start with you. 17. 17. 21. 19. 34. There's the one I was looking for a while ago. 19. See, I told you you didn't fit. I told you you didn't look like your age. 28. Did I get to do 28 right? Yeah. Okay. Next. 19. 20, 19, 19, 19, 20, 18, 18, 21, 20. Is that it? All right, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 26. All right, so n is equal to 26. All right, what's the first thing we do? Put them in order. Dang old highlight them. Dang old go up here and hit data. Dang old sort. Look at there. But it's easier to do it on calculator. All right, so now we got to find what? Your mean. So mean is equal to... And we gotta go down here and sum these up. <coughs> no coffee in class. Alright, add those up. And there's that number. So our mean is equal to this guy divided by this guy. There's our mean. So now, well, that's x. I don't like that being on top of each other. So insert. Insert. That's x. And then what? x minus what? x bar. So that's equal to this guy divided by or subtracted from or this guy subtracted from that guy, F4. There's those numbers. And then X minus X bar. Quantity what? Squared. That's supposed to be in parentheses, but you know, don't worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Squared. And we add those up. And just something else. If you add up all your difference of two squares, or x minus x bars, if you add them all up, what do you get? So what are we adding to the equation? Zero. So you're really not hurting yourself. But that's in the derivation, and I don't go through the derivation unless y'all want me to, but I don't want to, so we're not going to do it. All right, so... 
Alright, let's go and put all that in the center because I don't like it being on the right side. There we go. Alright, so. Oh, yeah, we got to go do our other stuff. 26. Is 26 odd or even? That's even. So we got to find our two middle numbers. Oh, Lord, that'd be what? They on half, half is 13. So that'd be number 13, 14, would not. No. Huh? It'd be 12. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it'd be 12 and 13, would it not? Should be those two numbers right there. Let's just highlight those and count. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, I've got to go down one. Thank God it's not going to be 19. It's going to be these two numbers. Dang, it is going to be 19. Darn it. I was going to get away from that. Let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then 12 should be on the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 19 is our median. Equals print C. This guy plus this guy divided by 2. What do you notice about the median and the mean? Is it closer? Yeah. Mode. I have no idea. I don't really care, but I would assume it's 19. Uh, it might be 20. Let's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's 18? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we got a trimodal. So you can put trimodal or you can say 18 comma 19 comma and 20. Now why do you think the mean and the median is so close? Because you have three what? Three modes. That's why it's so close. Mid-range or range. Dang old, that's going to be equal to your highest number minus your what? Lowest number, which is 15, I'm sorry, 17. Uh, mid range. Dang old, equal to parentheses this number plus this number. Divided by two, and that's your mid range. Variance and standard deviation. We well, variance, we've already got that number, so equals uh, parentheses. No, I don't want parentheses yet. Equals this number divided by parentheses. What? N minus what? 1, close parentheses. There's the variance. And then the standard deviation is going to be equal to the variance raised to the what? Well, dang old, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 9, that would be around 3.5. It's going to be roughly around 3.5, somewhere in there. So raised to the 0.5 power. It's a miracle. Now, what happened to the standard deviation? We started with what? When we started with the first six, what was the standard deviation? 4.26 or 4.3. What happened to the standard deviation? We cut it down by what? One. Because the variance did not show itself as much with 18, 19, and 20 being the what? The modes. 
and 21 was in there too. 21 was right there. So now let's do the standard, let's do the uh, curve. Equals the mean in the middle. Oh, did I just minus it? Okay. And then equals this number plus what? And then equals this number raised to the uh, plus the standard deviation of not thinking. And then equals this number minus the standard deviation. And then equals this number minus standard deviation. Okay, so the 12 year olds in here, y'all are unusual. And anybody above 28, that means me, is unusual. Now, y'all don't have anything to worry about 28 and 34 because y'all don't look 28 and 34, so y'all don't count. <clears throat> but you, I, I don't mean to make fun of anybody by their ages or anything like that, but this is the best way for you to see what you're actually doing with the standard deviation. <clears throat> What happened to the standard deviation? I mean, what happened to our our normal curve when we added everybody in? It became more normal. Okay? Before our curves was 12 to 30. And 12 to 28 and 13 to 27 and 3 3 oh we oh I threw that one I threw I threw that one out of office to 44 that's what I'm good at all right but when we added everybody in and we did the whole class as a whole what do you feel about this curve compared to the other curves what do you feel about it it's more accurate so, what does the law of large numbers tell us? The more we include in our standard deviation or our statistics, the more we include the what? The better, the more accurate. So now, I can go to my president's report and I can say, you know, I think the average age of students at the Anderson campus is around 21 years old. How did I know that? Because I took a sample of one class. Now, why did I say 21? It says 20, Hubert. Well, you want to throw a little bit, a little compensation in there just to help out. Because you're never 100% you're never accurate. All right, who's got questions? Now, the good thing about this is once you've made, and you, don't, you won't have one on the test like this, not with 30, 26 people. You will have some that are five and six. So let's go to the homework and look up one. If I can find one of all of this stuff in this there we go. Let's go to your homework or I'll just go to the ebook. Let's see, I don't know what section we're on. Chapter three, I think it's what three point we're still in three point three. I think three point three is standard deviation. I don't know if it's a frequency distribution or what, but we'll find out right quick. Okay. Uh, nope. That's, that's standard deviation. That's, nope. Okay. There's a big one. But that's just finding the range. And Okay, it's finding. That's how many... <coughs> Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 48. I wouldn't give you one like that on a test. That's good for homework, but I wouldn't do it. Okay, what is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You need to work on your spreadsheets if you get that one. If you get one up to 10. I'm trying to find one that's got 5 or 6. Good gosh. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we have seven? Okay, we can use this. So, how do you do it? Well, it says blah, 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 arrival time, blah, 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 find all this, find all the stuff. Okay, so you hit this, copy the clipboard, okay, then go pull up your, how many do you have, seven? Just to make sure, pull it over in an area that you're not sure of, so you see what it looks like, and hit paste. There's your numbers. What do you got to do with those numbers? Put them in order, so you go up to your handy dandy data tab, and hit that. Now you got them in order. Now you take those, control C or control X, and do what? And you're not done. Something happened. Okay, well we'll figure it out. First of all, we need to add them all up. Probably don't like all those negatives for one thing. So let's add them all up. A lot of negatives. Does it want us to find the average? Oh, uh, forget it then. I wanted to find the mean and standard deviation. I was fixing to say with those negatives. Find the range, variance, and standard. Yeah, but the standard deviation can't be negative. That's what they're trying to show you. Okay, I don't want that one. That's not going to be a test question. When I find a test question, I'll let you know. Okay, there we go. There's a test question. Let me do that one. Copy the clipboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try that one. That'd be a whole lot better to control V. Put it in order. Control C and control V. I don't know why it didn't. Usually, usually I don't have to do this, so I might have messed it up when I put those negatives in there. So let me go back and check it. I've never had this happen before. Equals this divided by this equals this. What is that? C fifty two minus this F four. There we go. <coughs> Range equal to this guy minus this guy and equals parentheses this guy plus this guy divided by two there and the variance should be correct because all those should be right never had I've never had that happen before sorry about that usually median Seven be that guy right there, point seven eight equals point seven eight. What's the mode? Mode no mode. You put zero? Put Nairn. Do that in Dr. Gabadi's class. Nairn. I do not to understand what that means. Alright. And there's your normal distribution. I'm going to uh, pull that back up because that should not have happened. Uh, what's the range? Oh, of course. Hold on. Man. All right, what's the range? The range is 0.63. Oh, really? Hold on.
630 from what it looks like. Unless they want hold on, let me make sure they want me to let me carry these out to five or six digits. Should be point nine six or point six three zero. <coughs> Point six three zero. Huh? Oh, what's my what's my range? Point. Hang out of the way. It's a conspiracy. And we all know whose fault it is. Bushes. Point nine six zero. Hey, I got a star. My variance is point one four nine. Fantastic. Sample standard deviation is point three eight five. So I'm confident in myself. So I don't have to put smokestacks on my truck. All right. So now, what's it going to ask now? Oh God. <laughs> what would be the values of the measures of variation is if the tuna sushi contained no mercury? I gotta read the problem. I haven't read the problem. What would the values of the measures of variation of the tuna contain? <laughs> Listed below are the amounts of mercury parts per million found in the third. Okay. This this is the parts per million. And it says, what would the values of the measures of variations contain no mercury? Well, they would all be what? I don't understand what question. I don't understand that. Okay, similar exercise. This is what I was getting to. All right, now I'm going to copy these, and this should work. Copy, okay. Go over here. I'm just going to go right here and hit Control V. There's those, and I'm going to put them in order. Data there, Control C or Control X, and Control V. Okay, something's going on. I don't know what's going on. It, I usually don't have this problem. Usually I just copy them over and it gives us the numbers. So evidently something's wrong. i got to figure it out. I'll figure it out. But you get the point. The whole point is that the variance depends on what? What is a good measure of the variance? I just pointed to it right there. Standard deviation. In other words, it tells you whether your data, whether your data, whether your data is spread out all over the place, or whether it's concentrated in one area. And you also can tell between the what median and the what mean if your data is all over the place or if it's concentrated in one little area. All right. Now, what are we going to do the next couple of days? Okay, next couple of days, meaning the next time y'all come in. The next time y'all come in, we're going to go over 3.4. Now, 3.4 is like a 1 or a 2 compared to 3.3 with the frequency distribution and the listed data. Listed data and frequency distribution, and I'll write this on the board for you because you need to get this in perspective. Um, unit 1 test. What did I tell you that 80% of your test was going to include? Chapter 3. Those are the people that listen that day. 80% comes from chapter 3. And 20% comes from chapters 1 and 2, which is mostly what? Okay, so we're not going to worry about this unless y'all can't read. Okay, we're not going to worry about this. But out of this, out of this 80%, most of this 
is going to be listed data and I don't know what they call it but listed data is what we just did today and frequency distribution now when I say listed data and frequency distribution that means that you're going to have if you have 10 problems and of course it's not going to be 10 usually I give 20 but if you have 10 problems on your test two are going to come from chapters 1 and 2 and 8 are going to come from chapter 3 and I would be willing to bet you if 8 come from chapter 3 6 of them are going to be listed data and frequency distribution and what am I going to ask on listed data and frequency distribution I'm going to ask you the mean and the what? Standard deviation. So those two things right there, mean and standard deviation, is going to make up 80% of 80% of your test pretty much. The other two or three problems that you're going to get, or four or five problems that you're going to get from chapter three, are going to be in 3.4. And 3.4 is box plots. And 3.4 is what we're going to go over. Let me show you. 3.4. I don't need to, but I still got a minute or two, don't I? I think three minutes. All right. Some of y'all are already having cardio infarctions. So y'all need to chill out. Um, box plots and percentiles. This, we're going to go over the percentiles and the quartiles. So that's what we're going to do when. Wednesday, I'm going over the last part of the what? Unit. So, what is that telling y'all? Chances are your homework is going to be due Monday. Because that gives y'all the whole weekend. So those 15 or 16 people that's waiting until Sunday night, or Monday night, or whenever I make it due, you, you might want to get started on it Saturday, okay? Let me get the roll. And hit my little silver button there if you don't mind. Appreciate it.